Good afternoon, folks. This is John Pettypa. Welcome back. It's now 25 minutes before 1 o'clock in the afternoon on the afternoon now of Saturday, the 20th day of March, and it's the first day of spring 2021. Going to be good things happen this year. Welcome back, and I'm so keyed up my message today, I'm not going to be able to sit down and do it. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to stand up to deliver my message today, okay? It be please bear with me, my friends. Now, they take... I have a special message. You can hear the music in the background. God bless America. I unabashedly love America. I'm a Canadian citizen, half American, and i very proud, and I love Nova Scotia. That's why I'm still there. I dearly love Nova Scotia. But I'm extremely proud and dearly love the United States of America and people everywhere. Now, I was at a business in Alls Cove at their office one day, and they had a, a quarry, a big picture up the wall, motivational, and it read, A ship in the water, excuse me, a ship in the harbor. All ships are in the water, generally. Let's enjoy that. A ship in the harbor is safe. Showed the ship in the harbor, then it showed around the bend, out to the ocean. But that's not what ships are made for. I'm going to repeat that. A ship in the harbor is safe, but that's not what ships were made for. And go ahead, take a chance. There's something about seafaring people. I think of the people at Kenso with a wonderful priest there, Father Daniel Boudreau. And he stayed, I think it was there, 17 years. He loved the people. He told me one day, things are good and they got tough. Things are tough right now, but they'll get better again someday. Optimist and forward-looking guy, and he respected and loved the people, and I would say the respect went back to him as well. Somebody, other priest in that situation would have a much harder time. He never let the circumstances of the fish industry get him down. He was looking to the future, and all people that succeed in life look to the future. In fact, I have the flag here in Newfoundland. They are a seafaring people. There's a special place in my heart for seafaring people. They, it's a tough, hard business fisheries. And a new, you go to those small outports and communities along the co bays and coves and inlets of Newfoundland, you will find some of the finest people you'll find in Earth anywhere. So you can search all over the globe, and you'll have a harder time to find the character of the people of Newfoundland, of Newfoundland and Labrador. Fantastic people. I have an affinity for people in rural areas, and especially along the coast, how people get along. Now, they're talking to ships. The first petty paw came to Nova Scotia, a place they call Port Royal, with Samuel Champlain, Claude Petty Senior, in the year 1604. It's unusual, he came with his family. They take and uh, had a son, Claude. Junior, and he married a full-blooded native, lovely native lady, Mary Therese, and that's where the native street comes in us, going through, his, going through the system many generations ago. And it was unusual for somebody to come over. They usually come over as fishermen, sailors, explorers, fur trappers later on. But anyway, uh, the first 1604, it was safe over Normandy and the Brittany coast of France. But they came over, he took some chance, uh, had some gall, nerve. The first Goodrow, not Boudreau, Goodrow, G-A-U-D-E-A-U. -E the first Goodrow, Cousin May's late husband is a Goodrow. If you look at the manifest of Jacques Cartier, he sailed even earlier. In 1534 from St. Malo, France. St. Malo, France to Quebec City. Jacques Cartier. And on that manifest, some of the sailors have the name of Goodrow. There were Goodrows on that ship with Jacques Cartier. Again, Jacques Cartier would have been safe farming and vineyards, uh, uh, farmyards, uh, animal livestock fields of St. Malo, France. He got in their ship and had some gall. Had some gall. We take, and we take my precious dear Aunt Hattie, left Trachety as a 14-year-old girl. Got on the train, raised enough money to get in the train, go to Boston, stay with her Aunt Elizabeth, who she was named after, her namesake. Boston, Massachusetts, United States of America. She was very lonely at first. Her Aunt Elizabeth said, stick with it, and 
She, about 15 and a half years old, she met Uncle Peter Leonovich, Leonovich, a Polish immigrant's son, oldest in the family, and rest is history. 16 years old, they got married, he was 17, and the marriage lasted for 48 years till death did they parton. Of that, and don't think in life that everything goes well. Aunt Hattie buried three of her four sons, and she buried her husband. She became a widow at, what, at 63 years old, and she buried three of her four sons and several of her daughter-in-laws, but she kept on going. There was new generations. One of those guys is an engineer at uh, Radeon, makes the Patriot missile that keeps the whole world free. And there's all kinds of other ones, girls and boys and men and women in the, the extended family United States that have gone on and done all kinds of wonderful things. Big families, good kids, uh, all kinds of things. So she kept on going. Cousin May buried one of her sons, got tragically killed in an accident as a young boy, young age, in a bike that her husband was in the military and got killed. And she more recently lost a son in tragic circumstances. So almost 90 years old, lost two of her six children. But she keeps on going. Oh, she can be feisty at times. That's nature. She used to, for 17 years, that woman, that lady, worked in Quebec at a reform school. She was the cook, and the police would stop her sometime in the storms in the morning. We had a big storm yesterday. Where the F you going, lady? I'm going to work. It's 4.30 in the morning. Well, can't you phone and take a sick day or tell them you can't get to work? She looked at the office and said, no, they're dependent upon me. She did their breakfast. She did baking, she did her ordering, got the dinner ready, and she started supper, and somebody else served a supper. But the people are dependent upon me. We take it, think of the late Abraham and Rose Schwartz. They came from Minsk and a nation of Belarus. They've been in the news lately. Belarus and in eastern Russia. Eastern, not actually Russia, it was independent country, Belarus near Russia. Minsk, Belarus, they got to the coast, they come to Pier 21, Halifax, and they arrived at the lovely Trucrocadine Monastery in back of Alls Cove, Port Mulgrave, through Cape Breton, to the lovely coastal coal mining community of New Waterford, Nova Scotia. The rest is history. And I'm going on a bit here. Please bear with me. I have a message to, I have a very hard time keeping a time limit. As you know, anybody viewing me, you and we have lots of loyal viewers. I appreciate that greatly. But uh, bear with me. I've got a message to get out here, folks. So the beautiful coastal coal mining community of New Waterford, Nova Scotia. We think of, uh, we can think of the Royakers family. The oldest family, oldest son that family, they're all a fine family. Oldest son, see, your parents have tremendous motivation. And Mr. Tony Rutgers and H.G. Henrietta Rutgers, who is now in heaven, actually, tomorrow would have been her 88th birthday. She gone to heaven two years ago in January. Hard to believe. Wonderful lady and her saintly wonderful husband's now in his early 90s. And seen last week, actually. Great guy. Fantastic people. Fantastic gentleman. And the oldest son told me, John, when you see your country devastated by war, it gives you tremendous motivation. I'm going to say it and repeat that. When Germany had invaded Holland during World War II, you see our country devastated by war, gives you tremendous motivation. Just every Sun, every Saturday morning when I'm here, I watch on CBS at 11.30 in the morning on the, on the satellite dish, the Henry Ford Innovation Nation. It's a half hour show, take out the ads about 25 minutes from 11.30 to 12 every Saturday morning. And this morning I dealt with Thomas Edison. Henry Ford's a remarkable gentleman in his own right. The Ford Motor Company, only big major company, a car automobile company, didn't take a government bailout. And Henry, Henry Ford this morning, one of the items to mention, I have about three or four items to cover, was Thomas Edison, the light bulb. And a screw and type light bulb. Excuse me a second here. Should have had, had to take one out my light fixture here. Here, the daytime, it doesn't affect light in the room here. It took about a thousand tries to get that filament to work, to get the filament to work. But he, people would laugh at him, but he kept on going, he kept trying. We think of the late, great Jimmy Matty. He came home just after World War II from the shipyard in Halifax. He was a native of Matty settlement in Anaganish County. He bought a farm just across the road from me. Few pe and he, he built he built a major him and his late son Teddy built a major 
uh, piggery in and Catlin. Few people complain about the smell of manure, but I can tell you, I'm going to repeat that. If a few complain about the smell of manure, tough. That's the smell of food. The pork, the good price, the good deals. Many a family had food in their belly because of the reasonable price they were able to sell their sides to be fed. Good and and pork and their pork. You can buy a side of pork there, put some potatoes in your garden, and you could go a long way. Since kids, we used to go over there. You could buy a, a pork liver for a dollar. You could. You had a nice supper with some vegetables from the garden and potatoes and a glass of milk or something like that there. So again, it took gall. And I'm going to conclude here. I was took a Dale Carnegie course, a little bit shy sometimes. I had to come out of my shell and learn to be a little bit more fort right now going. And I took a Dale Carnegie course in 1983. And in 1985, I was asked to go back as a graduate assistant. And you don't get paid, but it's fine. You get paid for it and seeing how people enjoy themselves. Anyway, there was a young guy got up one evening. They turned to teach you a little bit of public speaking. Actually, more a little bit. It's a very good course. I recommend it to anybody. The Dale Carnegie course. And this young fellow from St. Andrews. Something about St. Andrews. See, there's, I think there's five or seven priests come out of the community of St. Andrews, Anakinish County, up between Hedrington, just off the highway lower Salt River, between Hedrington and, and Salt River. And the overall, there's the great people up there. They're, they're not jealous about somebody getting ahead as much. So they, that, that's fine. If people are jealous of you, what did late Albert Witten said? Totally one happened. John, don't ever let anybody, don't ever let fizz you one bit of people laugh at you. In fact, Henry Ford, by the time he was up to his 850 or 900 try, a lot of people said, get, give up, don't do it. Mrs. Royker said an expression persistence. I had a plaque one time made booklet, I read a motivational booklet, and it talked about persistence. And that particular day, she looked at the book, the word persist, dare, persistence, she, did you get excited? Dare, persistence. In life, so much in life is persistence. We don't always have the best idea the first time out, but it's the persistence. It's persistence in life. So I'm going to wrap this up. It's the first day of spring. It's about 12 minutes before one o'clock in the afternoon. And I want to finish my point about the young fellow in 1985 at the Claymore Motel where the Dale Carnegie course was. And he mentioned, had this girl he liked. And he'd taken her, he's going on to take her to dance, invite her to dance. And do I find her a little bit shy? And he phoned her up. And had he not phoned her up, they wouldn't have went to dance and she wouldn't accept his proposal sometime later. And they got married and had, they had a couple of kids. And now, those kids, of course, are, that's now, you're talking to, Oh, God, they have kids their own now, uh, 36 years ago. So those those kids would be young men and women. Those little girls and boys would be young men and women now. In many cases, kids of their own. So uh, this young guy has grandkids now. But he had not made that call. And the girl said, yes, she'd go to dance and drive in theater with him, whatever. He wouldn't have this lovely family. That, that was the point of his a point at the, at the Dale Carnegie Clinic last night. So I'm going to bring this all together. First day of spring, bright future, ships, a ship in the harbor is safe. But that's not what ships were made for. I'm going to repeat that for the fourth time. A ship in the harbor is safe. But that's not what ships were made for. I did a video a few weeks ago on the Blue Nose, the Blue Nose from Lunenburg. Okay, I mentioned cancer and I mentioned the fine sailing folks of Newfoundland. In fact, one time, there's, and there's wonderful sailors out of Cape Breton and Arishat al Madam and Port Hood and Trinity Camp and Industrial Cape Breton all over. But it, anyway, always remember these things, folks. Never be afraid that people laugh at you, as Albert Witten taught me when I was a 70 year old boy. And never be afraid to take a chance in life, just like that ship in the office in Martin Mir area. Big frame picture. Well done. It showed a, a ship in a harbor is safe. But that's not what ships are made for. You go out in the world. So you, you go out, go ahead in life, take a chance. With that, I thank you for your patience. I've gone almost 15 minutes. Spread this video around. And never forget that if you don't go ahead in life and take a chance, you lose an awful lot of opportunity. Whether it's Petty Pot, Goodrow, it's uh, Schwartz, 
Rikers, Maddie, Ford, Edison, a young guy in the Dale Carnegie class that took a chance. All in life, we got to go ahead and take a chance. And with that, wish you all the best. It's a beautiful spring day after the storm. Better days ahead. And one more thing talking to ships. One more fantastic piece of news. Holland America, and the second one is uh, Holland America and other big cruise company, Caribbean, Caribbean Cruises, Royal Caribbean, Royal Caribbean, Holland America, two of the biggest cruise ships in the world, Carnival, excuse me, Carnival, Carnival Cruises, Carnival Cruises and Holland America both announced they're resuming cruises in June. So the, the world goes forth. We're like, we're like cats. People are curious. They want to get out the world and see the world. With that, all the best. God bless. Welcome to the first day of spring. Better days ahead. Thank you very much. Bye for now.